morning, folks. Peter's my name. Welcome to each and every one of you on behalf of our parish community here. A special hello and welcome to any newcomers or visitors. Father Paul Murphy is our celebrant this morning who tells me he's fighting fit, so get ready for a really hot sermon. Um, today is the 31st Sunday in Ordinary Time. And could I ask you to perhaps to turn to each other and say welcome, and in particular try and reach out to someone you haven't said hello to before. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Peter, for your gathering this morning. We continue that now in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. My sisters and brothers, have we come together to celebrate this Eucharist, let us just pause for a moment for us to be aware of our own brokenness. Lord Jesus, Son of Mary, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Lord, mercy. Have mercy. Lord Jesus, loved by Joseph, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, way to the Father, Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting.
And let us pray. Loving God, help us to live as you would want, united in respect and love. Bring us to the joy and the peace of your eternal home. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, If you fear the Lord your God all the days of your life, and if you keep all his laws and commandments which I lay on you, you will have a long life, you and your son and your grandson. Listen then, Israel. Keep and observe what will make you prosper and give you great increase as the Lord God of your fathers has promised you, giving you a land where milk and honey flow. Listen, Israel, the Lord our God is the one Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Let these words I urge on you today be written on your heart. This is the word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength, my rock, my fortress, my saviour. My God is the rock where I take refuge, my shield, my mighty help, my stronghold. The Lord Lord is worthy of all praise. When I call, I am saved from my foes. Long life to the Lord, my rock. Praise be the God who saves me. He has given great victories to his king and shown his love for his anointed. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. There used to be a great number of priests under the former covenant because death put an end to each one of them. But this one, Christ, because he remains forever, can never lose his priesthood. It follows then that his power to save is utterly certain since he is living forever to intercede for all who come to God through him. To suit us, the ideal high priest would have to be holy, innocent and uncontaminated, beyond the influence of sinners and raised up above the heavens, one who would not need to offer sacrifices every day as the other priests do for their own sins, and then for those of the people, because he has done this once and for all by offering himself. The law appoints high priests who are men subject to weakness, but the promise on oath which came after the law appointed the Son who is made perfect forever. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand to welcome the gospel.
The Lord be with you. The Gospel reading this morning is a continuation of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. And one of the scribes came up to Jesus and put a question to him. Which is the first of all commandments? And Jesus replied, this is the first. Listen, Israel, the Lord our God is the one Lord and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all, all your mind and with all your strength. And the second is this, you must love your neighbour as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. And the scribe said to him, well spoken, master, what, have you, what you have said is truth, and he is the one and there is no other. To love with all your heart, with all your understanding and strength, and to love your neighbour as yourself. This is far more important than any holocaust or sacrifice. And Jesus, seeing how widely he had spoken, said, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And after, and after that, no one dared to question him anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm telling myself that's the Holy Spirit telling me my homily notes are rubbish and, and to trust the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so, we've shared some incredibly important readings this morning with great significance for you and for me today as it was in the day of Moses and of course in the time of Jesus. Let's have a look at that first reading very briefly from Deuteronomy. Very rarely are we blessed to have readings that are connected, that make any, any connective sense as you and I sit here for Sunday. As I said, we've been blessed today that there's very significant connections between those readings. First of all, Deuteronomy. It was written in a form of a farewell address by Moses to the Israelites before they entered the Promised Land. So here we have Moses, almost as his last statement to his people, just before they go into the promised land, he has a statement for them. He uses the word, listen. The Hebrew readings that followed has a message as well, not as clearly as listen, but it points out that Jesus is more important than Moses. And then, of course, we get to the Gospel of Mark. Now, just to refresh you from those, re those words we've shared this morning, from Deuteronomy, the Lord our God is the one God you shall love with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Then, hundreds and hundreds of years later, Jesus is asked, what is the greatest of commandments? And he almost uses it word for word. He says, the Lord our God is the one Lord, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. So here's incredibly similar readings. No doubt, no doubt, Jesus was well and truly versed in the Torah, and Deuteronomy was the fifth book in the Torah. So the writers of Mark Gospel takes this opportunity to point out that right at the end of Moses' um, journey with his people, and right at the end of Jesus' journey with his people, this significant wording came out, the wording, listen. Listen. Now, I'm sure the times of, in Moses and the time of Jesus, those people had certain distractions in their lives. No doubt they did. But I would venture to suggest that nowhere near the distractions that you and I have in this modern world. Huh? There is just so much more, so much more clatter, so much more static around us than ever before. So has listening become a lost skill? Do we, each one of us, have selective listening? I know I do. I certainly do. And in some way it's a survival because there is so much information coming into us that it's nigh impossible to discern it, to pull it apart, to see how much truth's in it, the, uh, the beliefs in it, whatever it might be, we tend to take stuff in endlessly without challenging the basis for that. 
Now, for me, I'll, I'll name some of my, my lists on my not listened to list and see how that checks off with you. Politicians of all persuasions, I've just stopped listening to them. Right? I've just stopped listening to them. I say, and these are the, these are the sanitised words when I see them on television, I say, oh, you're so full of rubbish, go away. They're my nice words, right? <laughs> I'm over being updated on COVID in e each state. I really, the numbers just float across me like uh, whatever it is now. So I've tuned out on all the bits and pieces that I don't need to know apart from what Paul Murphy needs to know for his day-to-day -day operations, right? Does that make sense? The shock jocks of the world, I just don't listen to, right? Personally, I have no concept why people want to listen to people who make a fortune, their own fortunes, out of being disruptive, disturbing people, coming up with unbelievable stories that have no basis of truth and peddling them as truth. What about Facebook? What about our social media? You may think I have better things to do with my time, but when I got up this morning, it was going through my mind, I thought, I, I need some figures. So I had a look at what Zuckerberg has said as the followers on Facebook for the qu last quarter of last year. And he self-quotes 2.89 billion people are on Facebook in the world. Somebody suggested the other day that it was Facebook and a lot of social media was a toxic waste dump. And yet, so many of us follow it slavishly. Take what is sent there as gospel truth, factual, some, some level of authenticity attached to it. We are overloaded with information. It was interesting, a couple of weeks ago, I'll just share this story with you, I thought influencers were the figment of the imagination of demented advertising gurus. I didn't really think they existed in real life. I've seen them in advertisements on television, like a parenting guru and a social influencer, whatever it might be, but I didn't think they really existed. So I met somebody the other day, and that's what they do for a living. They're an influencer. They get sent baby clothes, and this is, I think, how it works, right? and they comment on it and say how lovely and beautiful it is and how it looked lovely on a such and such baby. And they put that on their page and people follow them. All I can say to you, it's a half hour of my life, I'll never get back again. <laughs> but, but there's a lot of truth in that. There's a lot of sadness in that. Because if we don't, if we have closed down on listening, which we haven't, we'll listen to all these strange voices. Huh? We will listen to all these strange voices around us. Huh? Somebody said to me the other day, and they were really quite intelligent and so forth, and they said, they told me something, and they said, but it was in the paper. And I went, yes. Like, yeah. All right, I'll leave it at that. Yeah, it's in the paper. <laughs> oh, dear God. Anyway, so what about listening? Do you think the government, any governments in Australia, actually listen to you? Do you think they listen to you? Right at this very moment, there's a huge meeting in Rome called the G20. 20 of the most powerful influential, wealthy countries in the world are gathering in Rome to have a talk fest. Tuesday of next week, they head in all their private jets and executive jets and what have you, they head to Glasgow. Now, you might be surprised at this, but I see where the, uh, the backpackers are booked out. That's where all these folks are staying. <laughs> There's... If you're a backpacker, you can't get a bed in Glasgow next week. Huh? <laughs> Do you think our bishops listen to us?
We've just been through the first stage of the plenary council. And I've gone, I've gone really looking for, for insightful responses or insights into people's participation at the plenary council. And I guess I've come up sorely disappointed. I go looking for people whose opinions I respect, for starters, right? That it's not just, again, something on faceless book. It's something that's, that has a name to it and a qualification. Now, one person in particular that I admire enormously was Francis Sullivan. That name may ring a bell with you folks. He was the face of the church during this, the Sexual Abuse Commission inquiry. Day after day after day, he fronted up trying to ex explain the indefensible. I have huge admiration for Francis Sullivan. His comments, I came away reading him that he clearly was disappointed. He said it was very structured, very controlled. For somebody who is a very prayerful man, he said it was overloaded with prayers which somehow stopped people getting to talk and to share. He thought in some ways it had been contrived. So I thought, oh, okay, that's one opinion, somebody who I really uh, understand and appreciate. So then I went looking for more voices and I came across, if I can find my note, if I get his title correct, Oh, it's floated off with the Holy Spirit. But anyway, his name, his surname is Warhurst, and he's a um, professor at ANU. He also heads up uh, Concerned Catholics based in, um, in Canberra and in Goulburn, and he's also a member of the Plenary Council. I don't know. I, I read his report, and I've, I found th the feelings coming from him that it was disappointing. It was disappointing. Same old, same old, I think, was one of the terms he used. So, what about your children? Do they listen to you? Your grandchildren? And probably when you were young, you didn't listen to your parents either, huh? He said, no, no, I know it all. Don't, don't tell me anything. Huh? You see, I think we need to talk a new language. Because clearly the language the church is talking today is not working. I say to you, how's that working for you? Right? Look around. Somehow the language we use is not engaging with one, two, maybe three generations of people. In recent times, I've noticed a marked move amongst people like me, priests, moving back to rules and regulations, hiding behind canon law. But canon law says this, canon law says that. Now, I don't know about you, but when I'm in, in real pain in my relationship with my God, the last thing I want is rules and regulations thrown at me. That's the last thing I want. What I want to hear is the central teachings of Jesus. Mercy, forgiveness, understanding and love. And until we as a church, you and I, collectively, and the church start to live those values and start to live them, not just mouth them, live them, then we're not going to be engaging the people out there in the streets. They're like chooks, hey, digging around in the dust, looking for a feed. They're desperate to hear those words of love and forgiveness. If they don't see it from you and from me, then they won't certainly understand it from a God. So listening. Clearly, they were the last messages that Moses gave to his people. And chronologically, maybe a week at the most 
from when Jesus was crucified. And that was the message. I just repeat that to you once again. Listen. Listen. There is only one God. And you will love that God with all your heart, with all your strength, and all your mind. And Jesus then added that second part, and your neighbour as yourself. Okay. If we don't love ourselves, then there's no way in the world can we love our neighbour. And let us now stand for the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified. Let us now put our prayers of intercession before our loving God. For the church, that every baptised person may be engaged in evangelisation, available to the mission by being witnesses of a life that has the flavour of the gospel. This is Pope Francis's prayer intention for October 2021. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That those forsaken by their loved ones will find refuge and strength in Jesus Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer that world leaders and governments will be guided by God's commandments. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That our parish community may show charity to our neighbours through Christian love. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may find healing through God's love. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died will dwell forever with the Lord, especially Lillian Eckard and Amber Rose Porter on their anniversaries. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For our prayers both spoken and those in the quiet of our hearts, we ask God to grant in God's own time. Amen.
In a similar way, when Seth was injured, he took the jealous and wanted to give me thanks. He gave it to his friends, saying, Take this for me and drink from it, for this is the jealous of my love. Provided the real eternal covenant, which will be poured out to you in the drink, but the forgiveness of sins. And do this in memory of me.
Just a message before the final blessing. Uh, this month of November, this coming month, is the month for the Holy Souls. There's also Mass for the Holy Souls. There's envelopes at the front of the church, so if you'd like to put the names of people on those as you leave the church, please do so. Uh, there'll be Mass here tomorrow morning at a quarter past nine and again on Tuesday morning for all souls. Let's now stand for the final blessing. And may Almighty God bless us all, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. This Eucharist never ends. Let us go out to live a sign of its love. Thank you. Thank you for being here.